couple of notes before we can we start. Uh, if you could put your phone on mute, uh, that would be really helpful. I've only got so many hands here, and um, I have to manually mute each person, uh, which can make it difficult if, if you uh, if there's too much background noise. The uh, second point uh, I want to make is uh, this session, as all of our webcast is being recorded, and uh, we'll have it up for replay uh, later if everything works right. Uh, sometimes the technology doesn't work and it doesn't come through well in the recording, uh, but if it does, um, we'll start. And so uh, to get started, um, I am Lester Knudsen. And uh, I've been working with Informix since 1983. Um, I primarily focus on performance tuning and training and very large databases and data warehousing with Informix. Uh, but we also, you know, do some small systems too. Uh, so we've, we've had a good mixture of, of large and, and small systems. Uh, I have the opportunity to work with a really great team of people here at Advanced Data Tools. Uh, Art Kegel, who some of you know, Mike uh, Walker, and Tom Beatty, um, who some of you may have known from the conference last week, are also on this team. And uh, it's really uh, great to work with everyone. Now, today's uh, presentation is one of my favorite. This was actually the uh, first user group presentation I did back in uh, 80 or 97, I think it was, or 96, uh, on exploring the SysMaster database. And I've been updating it over the years. Uh, someone said I've done it too much and uh, I should retire it. Well, there's enough new stuff in it uh, to make it worth doing one more time. And uh, so we'll go over it. And at the end of uh, this, probably in a couple of days, I'll have all the scripts and the slides available for you to download. Um, so don't feel like you have to write everything down right away. Uh, they will be available to download uh, after the presentation. So I want to talk about the SysMaster database, and then I want to talk about how you can use it to monitor your server, and what are some of the key things that uh, you should look for. And we'll talk about uh, your server, your DB spaces and chunks, tables and indexes, users and sessions, and then monitoring SQL. And uh, I've got 100 slides here. Uh, so. In an hour, I'm going to be pressed for time, but uh, at the end of the uh, session, I hope we can take a few questions. If not, uh, please go ahead and email me questions after this is done. So what is the SysMaster database? I, I used to call it, it's like peeking into the shared memory structures of an Informix server. And when you start up Informix, uh, there are three segments of memory that get established. One is the residence seg segment, one is the virtual segment, and the third is the message segment. In the res residence segment are a series of control tables that Informix uses to keep track of things. These are not tables in the sense of database tables, but they're C structures. Uh, more like arrays. And the SysMaster database is a peek into those arrays. <laughs> and uh, let me see, if you just joined, if you could please mute yourself. Uh, I'm trying to keep people muted, but we've got so many people on, it's hard to, uh, to see everybody. I apologize though for any noise that comes up. Um, but anyway, so the SysMaster database is a peek into those control structures that uh, the server uses to operate. And um, Informix uh, came along and, and put a nice uh, face on it and uh, made it a database that we can query and read using SQL, but it's not a real database. Um, what it does do is it has information about the server 
information about your DB spaces and chunks, information about databases and tables, and information about users. Now, it's a peek into shared memory, but to make it user-friendly, Informix did a really good job of creating some views. And these views, to be realized, may need disk space. In fact, they will, a lot of them will need disk space. Uh, when you do a query from, uh, my favorite example is syslocks, uh, it can be a very large table. If you have a million locks and uh, you do a query against syslocks in the sysmaster database, you're querying against a million records. And it's not just directly against a table. Syslocks is a view that uh, is made up of six tables. So you're doing a query that's doing a join against six tables with a huge number of records. All of this gets logged uh, because it's temp tables that need uh, buffered logging. So you can have some uh, disk access when you're querying the SysMaster database, but it's in creating the views that the SysMaster database uses. Now, you can't update the SysMaster. Uh, basically, if you could, that would probably corrupt your server. Uh, the way you update things is you go change a config setting or you restart the server or use an on-mode command. Um, you, you can't just go run SQL and update uh, the SysMaster database. You can't drop the SysMaster database uh, you, because it's not a real database pointer in memory. Now, the isolation is dirty read, even though it is a log database. And that means it's not going to place any locks on anybody uh, who's doing anything else on the server. It's very lightweight. It's just like OnStat. Um, now, because it is dirty read, you may get inconsistent results. And also, it actually depends on activity. Let's say you're doing a query against sys sessions to see all the users that are running a session. If a user logs off, their data is gone from that table in memory. And so when you do a query against six sys sessions, you won't see them. Um, a lot of tables uh, don't get read into memory until someone opens them. So if you run a query against a table in the SysMaster database, um, the data may not be there if no one else has opened the uh, table. And we'll take a look at that. Now, triggers and stored procedures. You can create triggers on the SysMaster database, they will never work. Uh, you'll see one of the uh, SQL queries I have here is to find out how much DB space is free. Um, and I thought, wow, that would be a great trigger, have a trigger alert me when a DB space hits 90% full. And uh, that trigger never fired. And that's, again, because these are not updated by normal SQL. Uh, they are views into control structures in memory. So the way to check for changes is to pull the SysMaster database. You can create stored procedures. Uh, one caveat, though, is make sure you have a copy, because anytime you upgrade Informix, uh, the SysMaster database gets dropped and recreated, and all your stored procedures will be dropped and recreated. So. Stored procedures work. Um, they will get dropped and recreated when you do upgrades. So it's a good idea to have a copy of them someplace else. Now, what I, I tend to recommend is there's another database called the sysadmin database that is permanent. And that's a bit more, uh, it takes real space. And it's different from the sysmaster database. And that's a good place to keep stored procedures uh, that you want because that way they'll be there between changes to the different versions. 
Yeah, the SysMaster database will change. Um, the amazing thing is I took my scripts that I originally developed on Informix 7.2, and all of them pretty much run on version 12 unchanged. Uh, so Informix has done a very good job of keeping the documented interface consistent. Uh, the undocumented interface is where you have to sort of watch and worry about what has changed and what may change in the future. Now, there's some really interesting uh, tables in the SysMaster database. One I want to point out right off the bat is flags text. This is a table that has descriptions about what's in various tables. Um, a lot of tables will have a field called flag that will be an integer and no description of what that means. This table has uh, the table name, the flag, the integer, and then a description of what that flag means. And it's used in most of the views to make the views in the SysMaster database more user-friendly. Um, you can also use it to try and decode some of the things that are going on in the SysMaster database. And I want to point this right out because it's, it's one of the key uh, ways of deciphering what is in the database. So let's sort of dive in and uh, I'm going to talk uh, first about server configuration and uh, what's, what's available there to look at your server. And uh, I've got some new stuff coming up pretty soon, too. So the first table I want to look at is sysconfig. This basically has your onconfig, or if you did nonstat minus C, uh, but it has a bit more. It has the uh, original value at boot time, the current effective value, and the default value. So you can compare uh, what's currently running and uh, what was there at boot time versus what was there at the default. And uh, a very simple, uh, just do a select star from sysconfig, uh, shows you the parameters and the values. I'm going to flip over to another window here. And uh, this is my version uh, 12 instance. Start up DB access, query, select the sysmaster, do a new select star from sysconfig, and you can see this is my onconfig file uh, for the instance I'm running right now. There's a table called syslogs, which has uh, all the log information uh, for your server, and uh, there's a simple query I've got here. Uh, to go out and see what the status of your logical logs are, and it shows you whether they're used backup current. The more interesting one is SysProfile. This is a table that um, has two things. It has a name and then a value. And so let's take a quick look at this. Uh, and you can see from the names, there are different counters in memory, and the value is the number of records in that count. Now, this table, uh, just like uh, your onstat, uh, gets cleared out every time you do an onstat minus Z. In fact, it's the same data that onstat minus P gets, and a lot of the onstat commands get this data. Um, so it gets zeroed out every time onstat minus C runs. And there's some new stuff in 12. Uh, over the years, the different uh, values have grown, and, and there's some interesting new stuff. Um, but let me point out some key things. Uh, you have basically your reads and writes, your buffer reads and writes, your disk reads and writes. You have things like foreground writes, and a way of keeping track of that. Uh, one I like is it has total number of sorts, how many sorts were in memory, how many sorts were on disk, and how much sort space 
uh, has been used, or the max sort space that a sort needed. So it gives you an idea of the kind of sorting activity. It has the number of sequential scans. It gives you an idea of how many sequential scans are being run on your server. Again, the names are very much like on stat minus p, um, and you can put together queries where you look for key values and uh, take, take a look at the results of that. So I want to start off with one uh, very simple one from this, is uh, what percent of your buffers, uh, your I.O. is from your buffers? And uh, here's a query that goes out and reads the percent of I.O. from your buffers. And it goes something like this. And uh, it says, okay, 94% of my reads are from my buffers and 83% of my writes are from my buffers. Now, one of the things that's happened, though, in version uh, 11 and 12 is we have different buffer pools for different page sizes. And so there's a new table called SysBuffPool that has the buffer uh, information by buffer pool size. And um, there's another new table uh, that I want to talk about that's undocumented called Sys Shared Memory Values. What's interesting about this table is this has the time your stats were last cleared. Um, SHPFCLR time is the time, last time you did an on stat minus Z. It also has the time that your server was booted. So you can start doing stats of from now, uh, since my server was booted, how many uh, buffer turnovers have I gone through? How many various uh, stats have I gone through that I need to take a look at? And uh, there are a couple of ways of decoding this. One is to use select uh, DB info, uh, and it has a function UTC to date time, which will take uh, boot time or the last time your stats were cleared and give you uh, that in uh, a date time stamp. And uh, then you can then use that for calculations to look at ratios. So let's take a look at one. Here's one that goes out and calculates uh, what percent of my I.O. is from buffers. And it uses this table. And uh, I believe I have it right here. Closes IE, I'll let Aaron know that it works on my name. And um, so this shows you uh, your buffer size. And on this system, I've actually got a buffer size that's 2K, 4K, 8K, and 16K. Um, and it tells me uh, how many reads and writes I've done for each buffer size and then the percent of the reads and writes by buffer size uh, so I can tell what percent of my I.O. by buffer size and see how effective they are. Now, I, I just created these uh, buffers and I just did a big load, uh, which is why the uh, write cache uh, is like it is on these systems. Another one that uh, you've heard Art talk about uh, many times, I'm sure, is the buffer turnover ratio. This is how many times an hour do your buffers turn over. And uh, think about it. It's, uh, you have uh, a block of memory. You do a select or you get some data. It reads it from disk into memory. It's there for the next person to use it. And it stays there until that space is needed. And we're trying to calculate how many times per hour does all that buffer space get flushed out and reloaded because of activity. And that's called the buffer turnover ratio. And uh, the recommendation is six to seven times an hour is pretty good. But how do you know how, how many times is it happening? Well, this is a query to go out and uh, it reads your pages uh, and your buffer writes and uh, number of buffers, and then calculates what the buffer turnover ratio is. 
and gives it to you in a percentage. So I can come over here and uh, let me uh, pick that. And so here it goes out and takes a look at my different buffer pools. And uh, the 2K buffer pool has uh, turned over uh, 0.1 times. The uh, 3K is 0.3 times. The uh, 8K is 0.5 times, and so on and so forth. And so this will tell me uh, what my turnover ratio is. And don't worry about writing down the SQL. I'll, I'll have these scripts out in the next couple of days with the slides uh, so you can download them and uh, try them out on your own. This is one, actually, that I wanted to flip over here, and uh, this is a busier system I'm running on. Uh, that's version 11. I've not upgraded it yet. Uh, but you can take this same query and uh, run it on version 11. Here I've only got one 4K buffer, uh, and it tells me what my turnover ratio for this server is um, here in version 11. A couple of other system ones, uh, SysVPProf uh, has your virtual processors. These are the on and its, and it tells you uh, what the on and it is, uh, you can see the text field there is the VP class, and if you go digging around, you'll see that that's created from this, the flags table. And then how much Unix uh, user and CPU time that on and it has taken up. And uh, so here's a script to go out and get stats about your, uh, your on and its. Sometimes uh, when you're doing performance tuning, uh, the goal is not to make it faster, but to make it more friendly. And um, this is um, one script that will go out there and look at CPU usage. And if you can reduce the CPU usage of the on and its, you've just made your system more responsive and more friendly to other things running on it. And uh, this will keep track of that. There's a new table uh, called Sys Checkpoint that has all your checkpoint information, including uh, things like the number of waiters, the longest time that uh, a critical waiter had to wait, uh, the I.O. in a checkpoint. There are two new uh, system tables for the environment, one that has the uh, server environment, sysenv, and then one that has the sessions environment, which is sysenv sess. And so this is a good way of looking at your environment that the users have versus your server. And uh, I've used this to uh, spot uh, changes in uh, where a user is connecting to a server with DB date set one way and the server is expecting it in another way, and they're getting errors that way. There's a table where you can go out and look at your online log. This is, I, I love this one. Uh, this is a good example of uh, the, the virtual table interface. spelled it. So it's just reading my online log from a file and uh, showing me what's in there. There's a table for managing the uh, onstat uh, minus G MGM are the PDQ uh, parameters that are uh, available. 
there's, uh, and, and this is sort of the results, it shows you a great deal of information about uh, a query, queries, PDQ queries that you have running right now. There are uh, three tables for monitoring network traffic. Uh, there's one for client, there's one for global, and then there's one for network I.O. Uh, that keeps track of uh, all the various network traffic that's going on. So there's a lot out there in, uh, in monitoring the server. And uh, I know I went through that fairly quickly, but I wanted to uh, just sort of give you a, a taste of what's in the SysMaster database. It's a script, by the way, that uh, you can basically go out and look at. It's in your Informixter. And uh, this is a script that's used to create that database. And uh, so you can go out and just, uh, this is the way I've learned pretty much everything uh, from it. Now, because a lot of it changes with releases and a lot of it is internal, uh, like this table here says for internal use only, uh, there, you may not understand what it is. Uh, there's also some very good documentation on the SysMaster database in uh, the Sys Admin Reference uh, Manual, and it has all the publicly documented uh, tables uh, described there very well. So the second part of this presentation is to take a look at DB spaces and chunks. And um, we're going to take a look at Sys uh, DB spaces, have all your DB spaces, and uh, gives you the page size of each DB space. Sys chunks has all your chunk information and gives you the status of your chunks and uh, the status of the chunk mirrors if you use Informix mirroring. And then my favorite, Sys chunk IO, uh, has the IO stats by chunk. And there's a real interesting note I have here. Uh, there, th this is a view, SysChunk.io, that is based on SysChunk tab fast, uh, which is the, the, you might say not the raw table, but the counter in memory of I.O. And uh, that raw table actually has read and write times by chunk. Uh, so it gives you a little bit more information than SysChunk.io. But this chunk I.O. tells you all the reads and writes by chunk. And, you know, what you want to do is see your I.O. balanced across your systems. And uh, this will tell you where the hot spots are. Um, what the read and write times tell you is where the slow response times are in addition to the hot spots. You may have a disk that doesn't have that much I.O., but because of something else on it, uh, it's slower uh, than usual, and the underlying table is a way to go look at that and see what, uh, what um, else may be on the disk. Uh, well, it tells you that you need to go look and figure out what else is on the disk that may be slowing it down. And then one of my favorites is SysChunk Free. Um, over and over again, I'm rebuilding databases for clients. And uh, as we re rebuild databases and tables, we're always trying to find free space that's contiguous. Now, when Informix creates a table, it uh, creates it with an initial extent that's contiguous. But then as it grows over time, the table becomes fragmented and you'll get free spots developing in the middle of uh, your tables and disks. And this goes out and finds where the free space is. So you can then tell by chunk where you have large enough blocks, or if you have a large enough blocks, um, to see what is uh, contiguous space. 
Now, somebody just asked a question in the chat, what's the asterisk mean? The asterisk means it's undocumented. I'm sorry, I should have said that earlier. Um, it's not one of the documented tables. Um, but this has been there uh, since the very beginning, and it's one of my favorites for going out there. And so let me give you an example of how, how it sort of works. Um, So here's a script. Um, I'm going out and it's going out to all my DB spaces and saying, okay, uh, here's the uh, DB space. Here's the uh, number of pages in that DB space. Uh, whoops, sorry, this is the wrong one. I've got my scripts. Uh... Oh, town free list, sorry. This goes out and tells you uh, where the starting uh, address is and how many freight pages are free uh, in each chunk. So as you can see, I have one called the Blast EBS that only has a small number of pages free here. Um, later on, I have more free space, and then I have another extent in that same DB space with more free space. So sys chunk free will tell you where that free space is. And uh, the script um, is called chunk FL list. So here's some scripts. How much space is free? This is the first one I picked up, and this is gives you by DB space uh, what your percent of free space is, uh, much like uh, the Unix DF command. And uh, it works both in uh, 11 and in uh, 12. This is running it on a different server that's running version 12. And uh, I have the same thing to show you how much blob space is free and uh, where are the blocks of free space. This is the one I was showing you earlier uh, with uh, the chunk free list. And uh, hang on, let me just mute everybody. Uh, So this is a script that goes out and uh, looks at all the chunks. And if you have mirrors, it will look at the mirror chunks and tell you which chunks have the most I.O. And so I can come over here and uh, grab chunk I.O. And it gives me the reads and writes by chunks telling me where the most I.O. was. This is an interesting one that I usually end up putting in a cron job and I uh, usually shorten, but it sort of gives me the status of each chunk. And what I'm really interested in here are uh, the uh, is offline, is recovering, is inconsistent. Those three things tell me I have a problem with the chunk. And uh, that will... Um, indicate that either a disk has gone bad or a chunk has gone bad or something's happened that, that is dangerous. Uh, I once had a customer that we had Informix mirroring turned on and uh, they were running for a month with a chunk that was bad and didn't know it because the Informix mirroring kept everything running perfectly and no one got an error. And I happened to run this one day and uh, noticed that uh, is offline had a one there. And I said, wait a minute, you've got a lot, you've got a chunk that's down. And they said, no, we don't, everything's working fine. 
Well, it turned out they did have a chunk that was down and the mirror was working fine, so the database was working fine. So that's your chunks and uh, DB space information. Uh, hang on, I've got another question here. Let me just see if I can get it. The uh, number of pages, uh, the question is, are the number of pages in those based on the page definition for a DB space? And the answer is yes. Uh, everything is given in pages, and depending on the page size that you created that DB space in, uh, the megabytes, k-bytes will be different, but the pages will always be uh, in pages for that DB space. So let's take a look at uh, some database and table information. And uh, the first one I want to take a look at is SysDatabases, which has uh, a list of all your databases that are on your server. And then there's SysTables, which has a list of all the tables on your server. And then you have SysExtents, which has the table and the database and the start and the size of the extent. So if a table has multiple extents, it will have multiple records in here. And I use this one a lot to track tables that have too many extents. Then you have SysPTProf, which has the performance of each table. And uh, it has both reads and writes, but it also has locks and deadlocks. And one that I like a lot is sequential scans. This tells me which tables have sequential scans. And uh, that may mean that there's an index missing on that table. Uh, it could mean that the table's small enough to fit in memory and the optimizer decides to scan it all the time. It could mean that the user is doing a select star with no where clause, which is forcing a sequential scan. Uh, but it can also mean that there is a index missing. And then SysTaf info is an undocumented table, uh, which I really like. It has, uh, for each table, the number of extents, uh, how many pages are allocated for that table, how many data pages are used, and uh, how many pages are used. So you can sort of go out and look at, I've got a table that's been allocated with this much space, this amount is used for data, this amount is used for other things like overhead uh, and catalogs, and uh, this is the free space that's there in that table before it has to get a new extent. This also has the number of rows that are in a table. So let's take a look at some scripts. Uh, the first one is just going out and telling uh, all the databases that are on the server. And uh, there's a story I have on this one. I, when I wrote this, this was back in 95 or 96, I was with a customer who had a lot of developers creating databases in the root DB space. And so he took this and modified it and put a cron job in place that would go out and create a list and then every night drop all the DB space databases not owned by Informix because it has the owner here that were in the root DB space. You can do things like that that's being a bit heavy handed I, th I think. Uh, so it shows you your databases and the logging status uh, whether they have logging. Uh, it will be a zero uh, with no logging, a one if they have logging. What's the size of a database? Uh, this to me is the best way to calculate the size of a database uh, is take in pages. So you have to translate this into KB uh, based on the, the page size of that table. Uh, but this goes out and calculates how many pages. Uh, it's actually used not only for all the tables, but for all the overhead associated with uh, those tables. Now, 
this is a real practical one and one I probably use the most. Uh, what tables have extents? This goes out, and uh, let me uh, run it on one of my live systems here. So it goes out, and, and uh, here I've only got the worst. Oh, this is a newly created database, so it's uh, pretty clean. Uh, the most I have is 13 extents for the sysadmin database for the sysprop body table. If I take a look at my other uh, setup and uh, run that, I may see something more interesting. Oh. My benchmark 2 table only has 18 extents. And you notice, uh, and this is what I wanted to do, it. there's second uh, row here has a table name with a space 105 underscore 10. This is telling me that there's an index out there with 18 extents uh, also. And so this will show both tables and indexes. And, you know, the rule of thumb is uh, once, I, I think once you get over 100 uh, extents, you need to start planning to reorganize it. Uh, once you get around 180, that's the point where uh, it becomes dangerous. And uh, you run the risk of not being able to allocate new expenses, extents in some of the older versions. And how do you calculate a new extent size? Uh, this is a script that goes out, and uh, you have to modify what's in red here. Uh, it has your page size and a growth factor. Um, so it will go out and say, here's a table. Uh, let's count the current uh, size and number of extents and multiply that by your page size and add a growth factor. Um, and that will give you a recommended extent size if you are going to recreate that table right now. It does the same for the next extent size. And um, I use a 1.2 for 20% growth and 20% yearly growth. But you need to change that to match your settings, uh, to match what you really need. What tables have the most I.O.? This is another one I use a lot. Uh, this allows me to go out and monitor uh, which tables uh, have the most reads and writes and sequential scans. Um, so I get the table name, the DB space info, and then all kinds of information about reads and writes and locks or scans. Here's one that just does sequential scans. And this is one that actually I'm working on right now and when you get the, uh, the download in a few days. Um, because sequential scans for small tables are not a problem. Uh, so I'm adding in a calculation of the size of the table. Uh, so not only will we look at uh, sequential scans, but how big the table is. If it's a small table, uh, you don't really need to worry about sequential scans. If it's a big table, then uh, you do want to look at it, because this might mean that you're missing an index. The last bit of information uh, I want to take a look at is user data. Uh, actually, this is not the last, second to the last. Um, and um, we're going to take a look at uh, sys sessions, uh, the profile stats for a user, a little bit about locks, and a little bit on weights. So there's a table called sys sessions that has connection information about every session. And uh, as soon as a user logs off, their information is gone. So it doesn't contain anything but current connections. And it has some information about are they waiting on something? Uh, are they in a critical uh, state? This is actually one field that I've used a lot. Uh, I was at a site recently where uh, they got a checkpoint required message and the server started to hang. 
And uh, so we're trying to debug why was the checkpoint required, but why was it not able to do the checkpoint? And uh, in looking at sys sessions and is critical, we found one user that was in the middle of a critical section. And uh, that user was then blocking the checkpoint, which was then blocking everybody else. So this is very ha handy in trying to figure out uh, what's going on. You can also see this in an on stat minus U. It's just not as easy to see it because it's a flag there that you have to, to read. Somebody asked the question, what is a critical section? A critical section is when a user uh, is actually in the middle of updating data or committing a record. And uh, when a user is updating data or committing a record, uh, the server cannot uh, yield uh, to anything else until that uh, commit is done and the data is firmly uh, committed. Uh, it's not the same as writing data because writing data gets logged. This is committing data, actually making the change uh, permanent. And then you have sys session profile, which tells you uh, your user sessions, how many locks they have, how, how many reads and writes, uh, how many sequential scans by users, uh, how many sorts uh, by users. And so it gives you an idea of what is going on in terms of user I.O. And, uh, you know, I, I, I look at this as a way of if you take uh, reads, and I usually take buff reads and buff writes, add them together, uh, you have a good sort of indication of who's your busiest user right now. Now again, as soon as the user disconnects, their information is gone from this table. But it tells you right now who's the busiest user on the system. Syslocks um, is a view that uh, I really don't use a lot because, as I mentioned earlier, it uh, takes a lot of I.O. to do it. It's made up of six underlying tables. Uh, now, it does that to make it friendlier. Uh, doing an onstat minus K gets you the raw data. This tries to give it to you in a friendlier format. Uh, but because of that, it can sometimes uh, be uh, very long. And on a large system, this can, if you have a million locks in your lock table, you're going to be reading a million rows to get this. So you may not want to do that. And then sys session waits tells you uh, who's waiting on what. Uh, you can get this from sys sessions too, which is where I, I like to get it. So a couple of examples here. DB who, who was one of the first scripts I wrote uh, to try and go out and figure out who all the users were uh, and using a database and what workstation they were coming in from and uh, what database they were connected to. And here's an example in an SQL script. Uh, here's an example in a shell script. The same thing. Just to list uh, sessions, uh, you can go do a select star uh, from sys sessions and see uh, the, all the sessions that are there. Uh, users waiting on resources. Uh, if you look at sys sessions and look at uh, what they're waiting on, uh, this shows you what users are waiting on something. Sorry, I have a siren going off outside. I think there's an uh, ambulance pulling up to one of the other office condos down here, so it's, apologize for the background noise. Uh, sys session prof gives you uh, information about the I.O for a profile um, and uh, gives you uh, information about ins and outs on that. Now, I was actually going to spend a long time on, on this, but I think I'm going to save it for the next webcast is SQL Trace. Uh, there are three tables that have information about SQL Trace and uh, setting uh, up traces, uh, which is really involved and um, it's, it's kind of interesting the way uh, you can 
capture SQL now in real time. Um, so the tables, uh, SQL trace has uh, all the information about each SQL statement running right now. Again, as soon as the statement is, is gone, it's gone. And uh, the I.O. that statement did, and things like the uh, estimated cost, the actual cost, uh, the number of rows. Uh, SysThreads has a thread um, and the total time that a thread has run, so you can keep track of which threads uh, are taking up the most time. And then uh, my favorite one, which is the one I want to sort of end with, is SQL Explain. Uh, this has the query plan uh, in memory right now of all the queries running. And uh, you can use this to find out on your system right now what's the most expensive uh, SQL that's running. And uh, I have a little query here that goes out. Whoops. I'm going to cut and paste this just as an example. Um, and uh, let's go to the uh, busier system. That's version 12. Let's go to version 11. So I've got a thousand users banging away running a benchmark right now in this system. So we should see uh, which is the most expensive SQL running right now. And uh, as you can see, we start getting into uh, these are all very lightweight because it's running a, a, a benchmark, so the cost is really low on all of these. Um, but this shows you what's running right now on your server, uh, the session ID, and uh, the estimated cost. And what you're looking for is a number where the estimated cost is in the thousands or hundreds of thousands. Uh, that tells you that, okay, uh, this is a real expensive query. And what I like to do is I take this, and uh, that gives me a starting point when I'm trying to tune a server as to what queries I need to focus on and uh, what queries uh, are the most expensive that are running on that server right now. Um, let me see, a couple of questions. Uh, there's a question uh, in the chat and uh, if, if you look uh, on top of your screen, you should see a viewing Lester uh, Knudsen's desktop, if you click on that green uh, icon there, you should be able to pull up a chat window if you don't have it. And um, this is the way we're going to do Q&A, is uh, ask a question in the chat window and I will try and get to it. Uh, if I don't, um, we will, uh, I, will, I will get back to you by email. And uh, so a question here is, do you have to have set explain on uh, to see the data in SysSQ explain? And the answer is no. This tells you what is running right now in the server uh, and what the optimizer assigned for that cost. Um, SysSQ explain, setting that on, then dumps that into a file for you to save. Uh, but the optimizer has to figure out this cost, and this tells you what the optimizer did in memory uh, to look at this cost. Now, one of the things I do want to talk about in the next, next time we do a webcast is more on SQL tracing, because that allows you to capture more detail than just the cost, but actually look at things like execution time and uh, what else is going on in that query. Um, so everybody found the chat uh, button, I hope, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go through uh, 
before I get to questions, I want to just uh, end, end with a couple of comments. Uh, the next webcast will be June 4th, and we do a lot of remote DBA monitoring here at Advanced Data Tools. And we have about 60 servers we monitor uh, all around the country. And so we're going to talk about uh, what, what you need. We're not going to give you every secret, but we will talk about what you need to monitor, uh, building a data warehouse uh, and building some dashboards for monitoring. We use a BI tool called Yellowfin that creates some very nice uh, reports for us that we use to uh, to monitor our servers. Like I get an email every hour telling me the status of all the servers uh, that we monitor for a client. And it's just a good way of, and it's from the Yellowfin BI tool, and it's just a good way to know that because it has it in color. If something's wrong, it's in red, and I know it right away. If uh, everything's okay, everything's listed in green, and so I know everything's okay. We'll show you that uh, June 4th. And we'll also talk about SQL Trace. So next, the next uh, webcast will probably be a mixture of a couple of things here. And uh, I haven't had a chance to warn Mike, this, but Mike Walker's on the webcast. He's on our staff, and he's going to be doing it with me, Mike. Um, so uh, something to think about over the next month. Second thing I wanted to say is uh, every year we do a fastest DBA contest, and um, this year uh, we're going to do one. Uh, it's going to be done in uh, July, and uh, we already have a web page up with uh, some details. Uh, June 1 will actually post the details. Uh, I wanted it, in the past we've done it at the IIUG conference and it's been limited to those who can attend. Um, as I've traveled around the world, I've met a lot of people who just can't come, and so I wanted a contest this year that anybody in the world could participate in. And uh, we've had some great participants in the past from around the world, and, and I'm looking forward to that this, this year. This year we're going to have two challenges at the same time. We're going to run the OLTP benchmark with 1,000 users that we did yet last year and at the same time have a billing job run. And um, you'll get the onconfig file, you'll get an SQL script for the billing job. Your job is to optimize those two things and send them back to us. And then we will run them here. And, and the goal will be who can get the most transactions per minute in the OLTP job and at the same time, get the most bills generated because uh, the, the, the billing script is going to generate bills. And uh, so that's going to be kind of exciting. And uh, watch for uh, more details on that June 1st. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention was Informix training. Uh, our classes now are on version 12. Uh, I spent a little bit of time the last week updating uh, some of our training curriculum to include version 12. So if you want the latest Informix training uh, on version 12, we have it. It also, uh, you know, the classes are open to everybody, and, and we have um, people on version 9 and 10 come to classes all the time. We'll, we'll be sure not to leave you out. Uh, the next class is July 15th. It's an advanced uh, course. Uh, we have our regular course for new DBAs in September, and then we have another advanced course in October. Now, you can take these courses uh, online from your desk anywhere in the world, um, or you can come to our training center here in Virginia, and we have a lab set up. Uh, if you take them online, uh, the lectures are done by WebEx like we're doing today, uh, except everybody's unmuted, so you can talk and ask questions uh, as I'm talking, or, or Art does uh, the advanced class with me as Art's talking, uh, you, can, you can do it. Um, the other thing we do is we, we have uh, each student gets a training server, a separate training server that you SSH into to do all the coursework and exercises. So you could be in anywhere in the world and uh, do it. 
And this is a question for you guys. I've, I've had some interest from some people in Australia uh, in taking the next class, but the problem is uh, when we would be doing it is right in the middle of the night for them. And so I was. this is a poll, and email me if you're interested. Uh, I'd be willing to do a class based on, like, Singapore time uh, so that it would start 9 a.m. Singapore time uh, to 5 p.m. Singapore time, uh, which will be in the middle of the night for me. Um, so if you're interested, email me, and we may add that to the schedule. And that will be a class where it will be designed for everybody to take remotely, uh, primarily for people in Asia and Pacific and India uh, who are interested in that. So with uh, that, let me uh, see if there are any more questions. And if, I, if you have a question and I missed it, uh, just send it to lester at advancedstatetools.com. Um, or uh, if you're interested in one of the training classes, just uh, send me an email to lester at advancedstatetools.com. And uh, any other questions? How to find a session that is using maximum uh, CPU? That is a really good question, and one of the things um, that's in SQL trace uh, is the CPU time by SQL. And so you can take that and add it together to get the CPU time for a session. So that will cover in the next webcast. Uh, please, uh, June 4th, uh, if you can attend, uh, we'll, we'll have that in the next webcast. And I'll, I'll have an example of that because that's something uh, I like to try and find out uh, all the time. Cool. Any other questions? Well, I don't see any more questions. I see a lot of thank yous, and I appreciate that. Um, it is our hour is up, and um, I'm uh, I'm going to say thank you uh, for attending our webcast. Uh, we will, uh, it'll take about two days. We'll try and have the recording and the slides and then uh, all the SQL. Um, I have, I'll just, I'm showing you that. I have, uh, um, 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 a whole bunch of scripts here that I've been updating over the years that, uh, will have available in, in a zip file. It'll take me about two more days to get this all together, and it will be out there for everyone uh, to grab from our website. And again, thank you all, and uh, appreciate your time and being on the webcast.